Richard Henson's grandfather started making brooms back in 1930 during the Great Depression. Chances are he didn't know he was starting an 80-year-old family tradition. Well, everybody's got a broom today, but nobody has the passion for making them like the third-generation broom maker up in his shop and store in western Kentucky. This guy enticed him to go on a broom sales trip with him over to Sykeston, Missouri. And my grandfather went and saw how that he sold all his brooms. And so he came back and he got the machinery that's over there in the corner now. And he started making brooms. And my father got into it. And so we've been doing it ever since. So in 1930, during the Great Depression, Raleigh Henson started a family broom making tradition. Now carried on at the Henson Broom Shop and General Store in Simsonia, Kentucky. The last words he ever spoke to any of his grandchildren were to me, and if I would learn how to make a broom, I would always have a job. I inherited the original equipment. I started making brooms and it opened up all kinds of doors. At the time, Richard Henson was a somewhat stage-struck basketball coach in nearby Mayfield. Before long, he was coaching himself on the craft of broom making. Using the same simple tools passed down from his father and grandfather. I'm never going to be able to say I'm perfect or I, can, I can't get any better because I believe that I can get better. And there is a way to build a better broom? There is if you just keep working at it. In addition to the time-honored craftsmanship, you have to have the right materials to make an authentic Henson broom, like quality broom corn. Produced in the United States at one time as a commercial farming crop. It is all hand harvested, it's labor intensive, so as you understand, it is grown in Mexico now. It's gotta be damp, not soaking wet. You gotta dip it, let it drip for a while, and then when it's in order, it's called in order. When it's in order, then it's ready to make brooms. Richard uses pre-cut wooden handles to make his traditional brooms, but for the more elaborate twisted handle versions, well, he applies another hands-on old-time process. So what kind of process do you use to attract customers to this little shop here in rural Kentucky? First of all, you got to have a good product, and then you got to promote it. You know, you, if you build it, they will come, that's fine, but you got to let them know you built it. I'm out of North Carolina that I used to make some of my fancier brooms. I got some no that you I'm going to keep it all to yourself. After a 1992 PBS documentary on the shop, Producers started calling with orders for brooms to be used as TV show props. Well, the exposure continued, and eventually tour buses started making regular stops. Now visitors are coming from many miles away. In addition to brooms, they can buy sorghum, jams, and jellies acquired from Amish farmers in Illinois. We have a candy that's called Cashew Crunch that's the most addicting candy on the face of the earth and we can't hardly keep it in stock in one bite and you're addicted for life. Mm. He's absolutely right. This is mine. <laughs> mm. Plus, where else can you find the same handmade hat Amish farmers wear? need to hitch up the mules and do some work. Visitors have plenty of reason to linger in this little shop. It's also very much a museum of collections and reflections. And if you really go to every wall in here, it's like a documentary of my life. You'll find bits and pieces of my life all the way around in a circular, things that I've done and things that I've experienced in life in addition to this right here. In a way, broom making has been a springboard to a sideline career Richard reveres. Hi, y'all. One that's a motivational speaker. I am a humorist. The stories I tell generally are true, things that I've experienced, but I'm not a stand-up comedian. 
I tell stuff that's funny, but I tell it funny. Aunt Modine was hard of hearing. And every night before they went to bed, Uncle Herb would say, Modine, you want to go to bed or what? She'd say, what? Yeah. They had 18 kids. <laughs> Whether he's telling a funny story or sharing this time-honored craft, Richard's drive is undeniable. Well, the brooms you get in the stores nowadays obviously don't have this much hands-on attention. And I hope they keep making them. Because <laughs> it helps your business, huh? It does. What's the difference, you think? I made it. And it'll last. It won't fall apart. And it's made with 100% broom corn. Too early to know if a fourth generation Henson will take over someday, he's not sure yet. Meanwhile, though, Richard proudly carries on an 80 plus year old family tradition with hopes of inspiring the lives of others, especially when it comes to sweeping away fears of failure. Don't let anybody outwork you and don't be afraid to fail. Failure will teach you to be better. <laughs>